So we celebrated on Easter Sunday and continue to celebrate as God's resurrected people every single day. And as God's resurrected people, there are uh, times in our lives where we come up against some some doubting thoughts or statements that cause us to perhaps wonder and even doubt what God has told us as his truth in his word. And our culture today is is really no different than the culture of the Bible and uh, how the doubts persist um, all, th- all throughout human history. And uh, so this series that we're working through, uh, it's kind of called both I Doubt It and I Believe It. Because as, as people with a, a sinful nature, we're all susceptible to doubts from time to time. And God knows that. And one of the things that he does for us is has given us his word to encourage us as uh, our, our go-to when faced with those doubts so that we can stand firm and believe and go from I doubt to I believe. We've been looking at this overarching verse, theme verse for this series from Matthew 28 as Jesus is preparing to ascend into heaven. Some kind of startling things are, uh, are told to us about doubt. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee. They went to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some still had their doubts. Then Jesus came to them and he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, so you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, those first followers of Jesus, seeing him resurrected in the flesh for several days, along with many, many others the Bible tells us about, they still had their doubts. So we're no different than they are. Nor do we need to beat ourselves up and feel guilty about sometimes when we are facing those doubts we're in the same boat with the human race. But it's also an opportunity for us to go to God's word and stand on the truth. And so that's what we want to encourage you to do as we move through this series, as well as perhaps God work through you to help someone else who's facing those doubts and be a conduit of the Holy Spirit into their hearts and their lives as well. So uh, today... You know, here at The Rock, we have a part of our vision statement that we've summarized down that says that we're grace-driven people. You know, that, that video that comes up that says, hey, we're going to start worship now. It says we're grace-driven, we're connecting people, uh, and uh, uh, we're on mission. We're connecting people to Jesus as God works in and through us. We're, we're about tapping into that grace of God that is abundantly free and connecting people to Jesus. And it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, comforting, and uh, uh, encouraging picture. Um, I mean, just look at our theme verse for today at Psalm 145, where it says, The Lord is gracious. You know, unconditional everlasting love and compassionate, slow to anger and rich, rich in love. The Lord is good to all he has compassion on all that he has made. Or perhaps even consider this one from 1 Timothy chapter 2. It says, this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Or or perhaps one more from John 14, these words of Jesus, where he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Wow, 
That's awesome stuff. Incredible, encouraging, uplifting, uplifting words, truth from God today. He's a God of love, and he wants everyone to share in this reward that he has waiting for us that's sealed for us in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus through faith. I mean, how awesome is that? It's almost like... It's almost like uh, Shouting like we did before, uh, you know, Christ is risen back and forth. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. All, all the time. I mean, let's, let's look at one more piece of Scripture and see if we can keep this, this momentum, this good news, this encouraging, uh, uplifting, inspiring picture to live in. Um, just a couple uh, verses after John 3.16. It says this, There is no judgment against anyone who believes in Him, that Him is Jesus. But anyone who does not believe in Him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. Whoa. That seems kind of harsh. What does Jesus mean by those who, who don't believe stand condemned or, or already been judged? Come on, it can't be that bad. God loves everyone, right? Uh, I mean, let's see what else Jesus has to say. Maybe, maybe he can... Maybe he just had an, an off moment there. Maybe he wasn't really that serious about that. Let's, let's, let's see if maybe we can, we can find out a little bit more about that from this parable that Jesus tells in Matthew chapter 13. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore sat down and sorted the good fish into crates, but threw the bad ones away. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right, that didn't help because that's really harsh. That's that's pretty final. That's pretty uh, tormenting. That's serious stuff. So what are we supposed to do about that? What, especially here at the Rock? I mean, we say we're grace-driven, driven people, and at the same time, we're people that 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 uh, believe that those who don't believe in Jesus as their Savior are going to be separated eternally from God in a very real place called hell. So, so what do we do with that? I mean, so maybe this is the question we need to ask ourselves today. How can God be a God of love and still let people go to hell. I'm guessing this isn't the first time you've heard that question in your lifetime. It's a question that is very prevalent in our culture today. So, Let's give, walk through some things that can help us consider this as people who follow Jesus, who stand on his promises, who are truly grace-driven and connecting people to Jesus as we're on mission. Here's the thing to consider. First one, the Bible is God's word of truth. We believe that the Bible is God's word and that what he says is true and doesn't require us to understand all of it, 
Oh, it's there for us to go to and peruse and, 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 and make sense out of by going to other parts of God's Word to help us understand. But yet, if, if still no clarity comes, we simply let God's Word stand and, and believe in what God says. And trust in His grace. Ecclesiastes 11 reminds us of this. Just as you can't understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. Translated, God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So it requires faith. The other thing that uh, we need to uh, consider uh, today is as we dig a little bit deeper into into this. I mean, j- just because we don't we don't understand um, some things doesn't mean that we can't understand other things. Uh, just because we run up against this difficulty to understand doesn't mean there aren't things that do kind of go together in our mind. So, what does it mean to that God is a God? Uh, of love. Well, love means relationship. I think that's important for us to understand uh, today and, and every day that love means relationship. God wants to be in relationship, a relationship of love with us. He loves us and we love him. He desires that, that for us. But for love to be real, there needs to be an opportunity to disconnect from that love, doesn't there? An opportunity to demonstrate one's love for another. So today, um, I have a little uh, object lesson. And Nick, I'm going to pick on you. I know I pick on you a lot, but you're big, broad-shouldered guy, and you think you can handle it. Come on up, would you? Are you getting nervous as you see this tape? Put out your arm. Get closer to me. I'll try not to get this too tight so we cut off the circulation to your hand. I know your hands are valuable to you. Nick and I are in relationship. (laughs) Only he has to go where I go. His hand goes up when my hand goes up. Are you ready to preach the rest of the message with me? (laughs) My hands fly around a lot. So. You do a great job. Is this what relationship is about? No, it's not. This is a very controlling relationship right here. And we may even argue and fight over who is in control of the relationship. It was great. I didn't even have to tell Nick to start pulling me back this way, did I? <laughs> See? It's what I get for getting a bigger, stronger person than me, right? But for it to be a relationship of love, there has to be an opportunity for each person to break free, right? Here's my break free. See if I can do this left-handed. I won't cut your shirt. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Nick. In that relationship, you're inseparable. And the point is is that you only know if someone really loves you and wants to uh, be with you if they have the ability to leave. 
right? As you see, in this relationship that God desires to have with us, because he is a God of love, he doesn't force anyone to be in this relationship with him. He doesn't force anyone to love him. He doesn't force anyone to believe in him. He offers relationship. He offers forgiveness. He offers grace. He offers peace, love, joy, gentleness, all those fruits of the Spirit through faith in Jesus. So another way we could say this is that people who don't go to heaven are the people who don't want heaven because God clearly says that heaven is through faith in Jesus. People who don't go to heaven have rejected God. They've rejected His one and only Son, as Jesus Himself said in John chapter 3. They want to be apart from God. They have separated themselves. God isn't taping them together, binding them to Him. God isn't forcing that. He's not handcuffing Himself to them. Because it really wouldn't be love then, would it? Now, all illustra- earthly illustrations fall apart at some point. And this is the best one that I could think of to, to demonstrate relationship of love. So what I want to remind you of today before we leave is a, a few things uh, that... Go ahead and put that up. God is a just and holy God, so there's a price to pay for sin. And the next statement reminds us too that that God is a loving God, so he paid the price for sin through Jesus. God did for you and for me what we could not on our own. Be perfect and holy. And God gave us Jesus' holiness. He made it ours through faith. As Jesus died and rose again, what is in Jesus, that holiness and perfection and right relationship with the Father is now ours through faith in Him. That's grace. We didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. God simply loves you and me and all the world. And so he does it all in Jesus. And this third statement, God is, a, is loving so he doesn't force anyone into a relationship with him because then it wouldn't be love. And he even gives us of his spirit to believe and to trust and to demonstrate our love for him by our words and actions. So people that don't go to heaven, they probably think their freedom is more important than a loving relationship with God. We talked about that last week, that how some people see Christianity as a straitjacket, that it limits, takes away their freedom, all the rules. Yet we also discovered last week that God has, has invited us into this covenant relationship. And he's given us these, these guidelines, these parameters within which to live with one another and with him, which really does free us through the forgiveness that we have in Jesus. And yet, if someone rejects God, wants their own freedom over the freedom that is theirs in Jesus, well, there needs to be a place for them to go when they die. And that's a place that is separated from God for all eternity. But what I want you to hear today is that doesn't have to be so. We've said here before that part of what we do here at The Rock by the power of the Holy Spirit is 
is, with his help, depopulate hell and increase the population of heaven. To introduce people to a relationship with God through his son, Jesus. To share our story of redemption. Our story of doubt. Our story of the need for forgiveness. Our story of failure and how God came in in Jesus and lifted us up, set us right and free and forgiven and back on the path. To use and work through us to demonstrate what love does and what love is in Jesus. And yet it's all up to the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Spirit in the people's hearts. People can reject the work of the Spirit. And yet God encourages us to keep loving. To keep being on mission. To be a model of what that grace looks like. You notice I never said perfect, a perfect example. There's only one of those. That's Jesus. You and I are grace-filled, forgiven examples, constantly in need of it. And remember, God has the goods and the riches. He's rich in love, and he keeps pouring it on out into our lives. As a friend of mine says, he continues to back the truck up and dump it all on you. I love that. Thank you. So what do we do? Let's wind this all up. What do we do with all this? So what now? Because remember, we want to encourage you, but we also want to encourage you to be an influence and to make an impact into someone else, into someone else's life who may be struggling with this. So one, we can thank God that he's offered grace in his Holy Spirit to believe to us. Two, we can pray for God's reassurance of his gracious gift, that daily we're reminded of it. As we fail and, and falter, that we are daily forgiven and given that measure of grace for the day. And third, to pray that God would work through us to connect others in relationship to him. Love means relationship. God has demonstrated that love in Jesus. And how cool is it that God now invites us to be those people through whom he works to connect others to himself. I pray that today we would see anew this God of love in our lives. But most of all, that we would trust in God's spirit working in and through us as we interact with those who struggle with this question today. And so that the Holy Spirit would use us, work in us and through us to help bring clarity to those who are doubting. As you and I believe. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we we thank you that your word is our source of truth. We, we thank you that... Um, as we think about and go deeper into these topics, as difficult as they are, that, that, that you break through and, and shed your light on them, that we can understand them as much as we need to, At the same time, believe in your promise 
to strengthen us and to come alongside us, even as you work in and through us in influencing others. Lord, in our times of doubt, remind us of your promise of truth, of forgiveness and life eternal in Jesus, and that you desire that for all who believe. You desire that for all who even don't believe now. That's why, that's why it's so urgent that we be people who engage in the lives of others so they can see your love. Amen.